Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, we are going to be talking about veteran services and what um, services and what resources are available to those who have been involved in the military. But before I begin, as usual, I would like to thank the crew for this evening. We have Colleen Moore, Director Extraordinaire, and Jolie Atwood, um, who is Colleen's right-hand girl, I believe, because she actually is sitting to the right of Colleen. And we also have Mike Duvall, who's a staff member here, helping keep be keeping BCAT running. And definitely, la or last but definitely not least, I would like to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for Daddy Date Night. And hopefully the evening has run much smoother than the rest of your day. If you have any questions for this evening, um, being a viewer at home, you are more than welcome to give us a call at 781-270-9199. Or if you would like to email me for a suggestion for a future topic or a question that you think of later on, please feel free to give me a, send me a note at talk at bcattv.org. So now that I think I have all of the administrative stuff aside, I would like to welcome my wonderful guest, Chris Hannafin. Thank you. Who is former military. Actually, you are still military still personnel. Still in the reserves. I just got off of active duty about seven months okay. ago and, and entered into the reserve forces. So. And you came to Burlington Veterans Services about seven months ago. Seven months ago. ago. Yes. How convenient. Very convenient, yes. So, I think we're leading into this, but can you tell me a little bit more about yourself, where you grew up, how you decided to get involved in the military, and what made you come to Burlington and work for Veteran Services? So, I grew up in Burlington, spent Woo! my entire life here, same house. Uh, I went to Burlington High School, graduated in 2003, and then after graduation, I uh, went into college at the University of Boston, mm -hmm. or University of Massachusetts, Boston, okay. and uh, in between my junior and so or senior year, decided that I, that I had an itch to scratch in regards to my future, okay. and, I, and I wanted to always be a Marine. Because uh, they I, have the coolest uniforms. I've been told that. Um, <laughs> it's, it's they get to play with swords. No. <laughs> well, believe it or not, every service has swords. Really? Yes. Okay. The Air Force doesn't need them. They still have them. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, I, okay. So uh, I wanted to enlist out of high school, but I went to college instead. But I always wanted to do it. So okay. um, it was the best time in between my junior and senior year. I went through officer candidate school okay. uh, in between that summer, came back, graduated from UMass Boston, and then got commissioned a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps. Excellent. Spent about 13 months of training uh, through the basic school and then infantry okay. officers course, became an infantry officer in 0302, uh, which is the billet designator. Okay. And uh, went to 2nd Battalion, 2nd Marines in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Okay. And then two weeks later, I uh, was deployed to Afghanistan. Okay. Now, where did you do all this training? Was it available like at All officer Boston, training uh, is done in Quantico, Virginia. Oh, so, okay. So, uh, officer candidate school and the basic school. Okay. Infantry officers course actually happens to be in Quantico, Virginia as well. But okay. a lot of officers go in different parts of the country to do their specialty training. But infantry officers' course is still in Virginia. Okay. And then you were, you went to Afghanistan. Afghanistan. I was there for about seven and a half months. Came home. Okay. Um, is that considered one tour of duty? Yes. When they always say, you know, second tour, first tour, is it always like seven-ish? Um, for the Marine Corps, it's usually about seven months. The Army does twelve-month deployments, Ooh. and for the Navy, normally about six months. Okay. Um, at least that's what I thought with the Navy. So I was home for about six months after my first deployment. Okay. And we were designated to go on the 22nd MU, uh, which is the Marine Expeditionary Unit. Okay. Uh, they have seven of them in the, in the Marine Corps, three on the East Coast, four on the West Coast. Um, three Starting to being, feel I need a whiteboard to figure all of this out. Yes. So three are take off out of California, and one takes off out of Okinawa, Japan. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, 
So I was designated for the 22nd Mew, which is out of North Carolina, okay. and was deployed five months early when Gaddafi was overthrown in Libya oh, as the okay. crisis response force for the United States. Okay. So we got on ships, sailed across the Atlantic, and sent about seven months off the coast of Libya. Lovely. Yes. Now, um, wait, the, the two separate deployments, were you with the same group of Marines? Well, with the same battalion. Or battalion. Or, um, okay. but Sorry, I'm really horrible at terminology. With the Marine Corps, especially infantry, um, they want to move you around. And as soon as you get comfortable with one unit, they okay. want to make you uncomfortable again and switch you to another one. So you don't get, like, complacent? You don't get complacent, but they want to make you as well-rounded as, a, as okay. an officer as possible. Because I keep thinking of the movie, like, Band of Brothers, and it was, like, the team that stuck together because it was, like, they knew everybody had their, their backs. Yes. So I did my entire deployment in Afghanistan and about two months afterwards okay. with the same um, 45 individuals. Okay. Then I moved over to a different uh, company. I was with Weapons Company. I went over to a golf company, and I spent about a year and a half with them. Okay. And that included about our year-long deployment. Wow. Yes. Yeah, they extended our, because they deployed us five months early. Okay. Uh, they didn't have another unit that was in the chute. Uh, so instead okay. of another unit getting deployed five months early, they just kind of time-gapped us in between. Okay. So... To this day, is still the longest naval deployment in modern day wow. history, which is See, good. And you're, I guess you're bad. in the history books. <laughs> Something like that. Something yes. like that. Okay. So, when you were done off the coast of Libya, we did you, some co-op training okay. in Spain, uh, France. You get to travel. Italy, That's kind of cool. Greece, Jordan. <clears throat> spent about a month in Djibouti. Okay. Uh, and then spent about a month off the coast of Yemen as well. Now, did you have any say in any place no. that you were? Okay. No. You basically said, this is the job that I want to do. Go where you need me, and they, right. they decide for um, you. You know, I wanted to be on the East Coast just because uh, I had family okay. on the East Coast. But if they wanted to, they could have shipped me to anywhere. 29 Palms, which is in California, okay. Camp Pendleton, California, Hawaii. Darn. Or uh, Okinawa, Japan is, okay. is another one. So what made you want to work in veteran services now? So after I left 2-2 in North Carolina, I went okay. up to D.C., and I spent about two and a half years with the Marine Corps Honor Guard. Okay. Uh, it's called Marine Barracks Washington, also known as 8th and I. Uh, okay. They do all the active duty funerals at... Um, or all funerals at Arlington National Arsh, Cemetery. Okay. Uh, we march in all the street parades through Washington, D.C., and basically the national capital region. Okay. Um, Is that also, like, involved in, like, you see pictures of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier? and? We don't necessarily do. So the Army is out at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, oh, okay. but they do have diplomatic events where Marines, with all the other okay. four branches of the service, Because they have the coolest do. uniforms. Yes. No. They, nobody wants to leave the Marine Corps out. <laughs> so I spent about two and a half years there, and, and I had moved my family around enough uh, and wanted my, yeah. my kids to kind of have a stable life and, and not have to move around every four mm -hmm. years. And it was just time for me to try something different, and we always wanted to move back home. So okay. We bought a house in Burlington, moved back home. Excellent. And um, it just so happened that as I was leaving the Marine Corps, Bob Hogan was the previous veteran service mm -hmm. officer, uh, was retiring. So I found out that he was retiring. Hey, Bob. And, uh, and I put my name in the hat and started the whole interview process. And, and so I ended up getting the job. Cool. And the great thing about the job is, is I love the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. but I think... Most, what most people love about the military is the people that you work with. Mm -hmm. And so this allows me to operate and work with individuals, like-minded individuals that are okay. all veterans. Um, so that's, that's the beauty of the job is I kind of never left the Marine Corps in regards to the people because that's who I work with every day. You just don't have to get the haircut 
anymore. Right. Uh, <laughs> except for with the reserves, I gotta, oh, well, get, I gotta yeah. get it. I gotta get it once a month. So you're still doing reserves. Now, yes. is reserves? Do you have to like say I'm gonna do this for seven years? Or no, I don't have a contract. Okay. Um, if I wanted to stop the reserves tomorrow, I could. Okay. But I love the Marine Corps, and I, I wanted to keep my foot in the door, and, and I really okay. like the unit that I'm with. So. Okay. Now, when you do reserve stuff, like the the one week in a month, two week two weeks a yes. year. Where do you go for that? Um, do you have to go back down to Virginia? No. So the unit is based out of Fort Devens, which is near Harvard, Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay. And Upper two. Yes. Okay. And we just did our annual training. Okay. In January. Okay. In Fort Ethan Allen, which is in the mountains in Vermont. Vermont. Okay. So like, Ethan Allen sounds Vermont. <laughs> yes. Um, and they probably have a lot of snow up there. They didn't. Really? Which is the worst part about it. Uh, oh. We are doing mountain warfare training, and oh. part of that is winter survival. And the only way you survive in the winter is with snow, because snow. snow is an yeah. insulator. It's helpful. Uh, yeah. And there was rain and not a Ooh. whole lot of snow. So yeah. cold and wet is not a good mixture. No. So let's talk about veteran services. Now, a veteran is anyone who who has served? So there's a few like different classifications. Okay. Yeah. Um, prior to 1980, if you did 180 days of active service, you okay. were considered a veteran. Okay. Um, that's to include active duty military. All they had to do was okay. 18 months. Um, or I'm sorry, 180 days. And you had to, and they didn't have to be concurrent. Um, okay. So you could be a reservist, mm -hmm. and as long as you did 180 days of active service, okay, you were classified as a veteran. Okay. So you didn't necessarily have to have battle experience no. as long as you were active no. duty the military. No. Okay. The new classification as of 1980 to current present time is you have to do 24 months of active duty. Okay. Um, and again, that doesn't have to be concurrent. No, it does not have to be concurrent. Or Okay. But for reservists or National Guard, your annual training does not count as activation. Oh, okay. So you would actually, your unit would actually have to be activated. And all of this goes away with spending one day in a combat zone. So if you were a veteran okay. and you had only had 10 days in, on active duty and you went over to a combat zone for one day, now you are classified as a veteran. Oh, Yes. okay. So the one day in a combat zone kind of changes the veteran status. Okay. The only other nobody option, wants to go in a combat zone. No. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, normally. Normally. Okay. Um, Depends on which combat zone. No. But for reservists, the only other way that you're classified as a veteran is if you do 20 years or more. Um, so if you don't have okay. the, the 24 the months. Yes. If you don't have, currently, okay. if you don't have the 24 months of active service, but you did 20 years in the reserves, okay. you can be classified as a veteran and be eligible for veterans' benefits. Oh, and that's okay. the biggest aspect of this is, is veterans' benefits are, are awarded only to those that are classified as veterans. Okay. So unfortunately, those that have served maybe six years in the reserves but never got activated, they're not classified as veterans, so oh, they don't okay. fall under the VA's benefits. Okay, unless they go back for another 14 years. Correct. Okay, now you had mentioned National Guard as yes. well as reserves. Correct. Are those the same? No. No. So the what, National what the, Guard, okay. um, and each state has them. Okay. You know, 200 years ago they had militias. Mm -hmm. Now it's basically a National Guard. Uh, the difference between the reserves and the National Guard are the National Guard, or the commander in chief, if you will, of the National Guard is okay. the governor of that state. Oh, and the only okay. one that can activate the National Guard is the governor of that state. Okay. Now, the National Guard does get activated to war zones. Okay. But that's kind of at the leisure of the governor. So the president oh, of the United okay. States would go to the governor and say, hey, I need additional troops. And okay. the governor would say, I will give you these forces from my National Guard. Oh, but the okay. National Guard fall under that state. The reserves are completely oh, okay. separate. The reserves are much like active duty in regards to the chain of command. Okay. Uh, the president of the United States is still the the commander, or okay. the the um, yeah, commander um, the yes the commander in chief. Um, but their 
on a reserve status instead okay. of an active duty status. So there is okay. a difference between reserves and National Guard. Uh, okay. So National Guard really isn't national. No. No, okay. if you look I at, think that's what confused me. So if you look at the Massachusetts National okay. Guard seal, it is actually the Massachusetts oh, seal. And okay. it's the Minuteman. Uh, do they ever do, like, cross-training or anything? Like oh, absolutely. This? Okay. Um, so they have National Guard service from Vermont to train with okay. uh, Canadian forces. Oh, okay. So, I mean, they do most of the same things. It's just a different classification in regards to hierarchy and who has operational or administrative control. Okay. I think I just got a whole lesson in military history. <laughs> Whoa, okay, my brain's going to explode. Let's go back to veteran services sure. a little bit. So your office helps Burlington veterans. Burlington veterans. And actually our okay. office can help people outside of Burlington okay. with the federal VA program. Okay. But there's two different entities in regards to veterans benefits. You okay. have the big VA, the okay. Veterans Affairs. Okay. The Department of Veterans Affairs, which is the federal branch. And they're the ones that run the hospitals yes. everywhere. Okay. And then you have the Massachusetts Department of Veteran Affairs, which is okay. completely separate. Um, and actually, Massachusetts is a very comprehensive state in regards to veterans' benefits that they offer to veterans. Okay. Um, and they offer a whole slew of things that the VA um, or yeah, two veterans that don't necessarily... Um, have access to federal okay. VA stuff. So Massachusetts is a very veteran-friendly state in regards okay. to benefits. Uh, Massachusetts offers welcome home bonuses, war bonuses. Uh, they also have a program called Chapter 115. It's a Mass General okay. Law. Saw Chapter that a little bit on the website. And yes, um, it's designated for for veterans and spouses. Okay, uh, and that could be a surviving spouse. So if the veteran passes away, the surviving spouse is okay. still eligible as long as the surviving spouse doesn't remarry. Oh, okay. um, and they are eligible for financial assistance and medical reimbursement for those that live 200% below the federal poverty level. And for those that okay. live you know, slightly above 200%, they are still eligible for medical reimbursement. They're just not okay. eligible for the financial uh, assistance. Okay, wow. And you had to learn all of this in the last seven months. Yes, and it's still a learning process. I still have veterans that come in and ask okay. questions, and I have to call either Larry Giuseppe from Woburn, or I call I still call Bob Hogan okay. uh, and hey, ask Bob. him a question, or Tim Sullivan, who is the National Service Officer out of Boston. Okay. Uh, making phone calls constantly, trying to update. Okay, which kind of leads into my next question about, are there partnering organizations that work with your office? Oh, absolutely. So every... City or municipality in Massachusetts, and Massachusetts okay. is one of the only states that mandates this, but every city or municipality <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that has over 12,000 citizens has to have a full-time veteran service officer. Oh. If you go to other parts of the country, um, okay. they don't have veteran service officers mandated by the town or city. Most of those, so what do veterans, those veterans do? They deal with the bigger organizations, the oh, DAV, so the Disabled American okay. Veterans, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, the Marine Corps League, or the um, American Legion. Oh, so those okay. are national organizations, and they do oh, okay. a lot of the same veteran service stuff that, that I do. The okay. only difference is, is a lot of those states don't have the comprehensive programs that Massachusetts has, like the Chapter oh, okay. 115. Okay. So that's why each town is mandated that they have a veteran service okay, officer. Okay, so remind me again what Chapter 115 is. It's the um, financial assistance and medical reimbursement for veterans and their okay. families that live 200% below the federal poverty level. Okay, that's pretty significantly below the poverty level, yes. isn't it? Yes. Um, and the poverty right, level is pretty low. And right now... In order to classify for Chapter 115 okay. as a single veteran or a single surviving spouse of a veteran, okay. you can't bring in more than $1,962 a month, and you can't have more than $5,000 in assets in anything, uh, okay. excluding your first home and your first car. 
Okay. So whether or not that's savings accounts, checking accounts, stocks, bonds, dividends. Uh, okay. Um, life insurance is kind of a, a different situation if you have, okay. as long as the life insurance policy doesn't have a cash value, uh, um, okay. you know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a disqualifier. Okay. But if you, like I said, if you're a single veteran that brings in less than, we'll say $2,000 a month and has less okay. than $5,000 in assets, we can provide them with Chapter 115 assistance. Okay. And there's a few things that go into that. A lot of these veterans are elderly. Um, they're 65 and older. Okay. So they're not necessarily bringing in an income outside of maybe a small pension or their Social Security check. Okay. For elderly that are receiving Social Security, many of them are, are getting $104.90 deducted out of their Social Security to pay for Medicare Part B. Oh, okay. If you qualify for Chapter 115, part of the medical reimbursement, I can reimburse you for the chapter, or I can reimburse you for the $104.90. Okay. Uh, a lot of people have supplemental insurance, whether or not it's through Tufts oh, okay. Health Plan or uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, AARP, uh, and for an elderly person over 65, that's $182 to $188. Oh, okay. We can reimburse them for that. Oh, okay. We also can reimburse them for any type of co-pays that they're paying in regards to medical costs. Um, and in some cases, we can reimburse them for dental costs during certain parts of the year. Okay. So, I mean, it's a great program for, for especially the elderly veteran population. For those that are under... 65 years old, they still qualify, okay. but there's certain parameters that, that are put in there. Um, and, and it's more of ensuring that that individual is still trying to seek employment as long as they are employable. Okay. Um, and we help them with that, with oh, okay. you know job searches every month. And then also uh, they have to provide a little bit more information, but they are still qualified for Chapter 115. Okay. Ballpark figure, how many veterans does your office service? Like how many b veterans are in Burlington? So it fluctuates uh, from month to month. Okay. But as of yesterday, we have 19, okay. which isn't a whole lot. Um, but if you were to go to a, a town like Woburn where they've got, you know, 50,000 people right. and a much, much higher uh, veteran population, oh, okay. they have anywhere between 30 and 60 people. Oh, okay. Um, the other aspect of it is, is um, Burlington's veteran population right now, from what I know, is anywhere between 1,200 and 1,300 individuals. Okay. Seventy percent of them are, are at that 65. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yes. Um, and I think Burlington may, you know, veterans may be doing a little bit better than, than maybe those in Bill Ricker or, or Woburn. Okay. Um, we don't really know. And, and part of my job in, in coming on to your program and other to programs reach out, is, hey, if you're is to veteran, reach out and let people know, you know, if you think that you qualify, and even if you think you don't qualify okay. and you just want answers, come to my office, uh, give me a call, set up an appointment, okay. and uh, we'll go through all your paperwork. Mm -hmm. And and if you are qualified, absolutely, we'll get you on the program. And this just isn't just for the Chapter 115 thing. This no, is like this for is, any. This is, yeah, this is for anything. Um, the biggest. You know, thing, if I were if I if I were a veteran, I could come and say, okay, what is available to absolutely. me? Absolutely. Okay. And, and and unfortunately, out there, um, there's this misconception that there's a whole slew of veterans benefits, mm -hmm. and that everybody are qualified for them. And that's not necessarily the oh, case. Okay. There's actually a select few. Um, that qualify for most veteran benefits. Okay. Uh, but with that being said, you know, I'd rather veterans come in and ask the questions, and, okay. and you know, I will continue to ask the questions oh, okay. in regards to the you'll big do, VA yeah. or, you'll or do the your, massive. You'll do their homework. Oh, absolutely, yeah. okay. and, and that's the one thing that I've learned over the course of time, because I am a veteran. I've gone okay. through all of this. It's very difficult, uh, and a lot of people lose hope. Uh, especially yeah. when they're filing paperwork for the big federal VA. <laughs> um, I can yeah. tell you if you come Government in, paperwork, just right there, you know. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And if, I mean, if you leave anything blank, they'll send it back to you and start the whole process over. So Oof. it's one thing that yeah. when I go through all the paperwork and sit down with a veteran, if something requires any type of information, either an NA or a zero, okay. um, and make sure that all, all the information. Do not leave anything blank. Exactly. Okay. 
And then the other aspect that is, and a lot of people um, are starting to understand this, is the VA is significantly bogged down. Um, our veteran population is growing and decreasing. Um, mm -hmm. So the baby boomers and, and the World War II generation, the Korean War generation, unfortunately, mm -hmm. are starting to, to dwindle. Right. Um, but with that, we have a whole new generation that we've been at war for the past 14 years. Yeah. And millions upon millions mm -hmm. of Americans have answered the call. Um, so there was kind of a lull in, in people who have participated in the military okay. basically between 1975 and and 2001, okay. uh, and there's only been a few skirmishes in between there to include uh, the Gulf War in 91 and mm -hmm. 92, and then Grenada, Panama, uh, so Beirut, um, you know, there's only been a few confrontations. Mm -hmm. This is the longest time that our country's been at war in the last 50 years, so uh, 14 years, it means that our veteran population is going to continue to grow. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and the VA is, okay. is trying to man at that as much as possible, okay. but people need to understand that when they put in a claim for some type of disability compensation or non-service connected disabilities, um, that they take anywhere between six and 12 months on the short end. Oh, and wow. I've seen, okay. I've heard of some taking as long as a few years. Wow. And it's unfortunate, um, but it's kind of the name of the game right, right now. Okay. I was going to think of something else. Okay. Um, we talked about the chapter 115. What are like, I remember hearing growing up about the GI Bill. Yes. And that was really popular right. about, you know, you, you serve your country and then your country will pay for your college. Is that still it's, an option? It's still an option. And the one that you're talking about was the Montgomery GI Bill. Oh, okay. And in order for you to be qualified for the Montgomery GI Bill, you had to pay into it. Okay. And I believe you paid $200 a month for six months for a total of $1,200. As soon okay. as you accrued the $1,200 towards the Montgomery GI okay. Bill, you were eligible for that. Okay. Um, that has since kind of dwindled away. Okay. Now that they've readjusted that to the post 9-11 GI Bill. Okay. Um, and as long as you meet whatever your current contract is, you qualify for the, and, and you are a veteran, you qualify for the post 9-11 okay, GI so Bill. Okay, so what contract are we talking about here? Um, for most people going into the military today, that's four years active duty and okay, four so years inactive Okay, so that contract. Duties. Okay, yes. just making sure I wasn't missing a different contract or no. something. No, um, so the post-9-11 GI Bill, it's okay. good. Um, and if you go to a brick-and-mortar four-year school, it's fantastic. Okay. Uh, one of the things that you are afforded while you're going to that school is basic housing allowance. And depending on where you are okay. uh, and where you're going to school is dependent on how much that allowance is. So let's say okay. you're going to um, Boston College. Okay. It's a very expensive school. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, any Marine that is, or I'm sorry, every service member okay. that is um, leaving the military that wants to go to, say, Boston College. Okay. They would file paperwork to be granted the post-9-11 GI Bill, and one aspect of that is, and then you lived in Boston, you would be afforded the Boston basic housing allowance okay. at an E-5s rate, which okay. is um, the pay scale. So okay. you start at E-1, and it goes all the way up to okay. E-9 for e enlisted, the enlisted okay. one. And then okay. for officers, it's officer one to officer ten. Oh, okay. So O one to um, O ten. Understood. And so you get paid basically at the middle of the road BAH scale, um, and in Boston, that's about thirty one hundred dollars a month. That goes towards your, and you could put it towards whatever you want, but it okay. can go towards your housing, your books, your food, uh, clothing, things like oh, that. So okay. that's just one aspect of the of the GI Bill. The other aspect that people don't really understand is the GI Bill doesn't necessarily pay for a full four years of okay. tuition. Uh, there's a it's max like a scholarship cap out. Type thing? Yeah, okay. there's a max cap out in regards to, excuse me, how much the United States government is willing to pay. Okay. So if you go to a state school, and you're an in-resident uh, student. That could cover your four years of tuition. Okay. If you go to a private school and you're going to a school that's $60,000 a year, more than likely it's not going to cover everything. 
especially um, if you wanted to do graduate school oh, and then post grad and right. <laughs> And then there's okay. something completely different that they call a yellow ribbon program. Um, okay. And these are certain schools that are trying to give back to the veteran community. Okay. Um, so they actually match, not, um, not dollar, dollar for, for dollar, dollar but, but they'll match a certain percentage of oh, what the, okay. the VA is matching for the post-9-11 okay. GI Bill. Okay. So, and schools do this kind of out of the goodness of their heart um, and realize that, you know, they want to provide an education to okay. veterans. And, and I think part of the reason why is because the veterans are, are making a name for themselves mm -hmm. out in the private sector. Okay. Uh, and, in fact, if you looked at see a lot of Fortune 500 CEOs uh, and then, you know, chief financial officers or, or chief operating officers, mm -hmm. most of them have some type of military, military experience. Oh, okay. And I think the military offers um, individuals, uh, well, certainly you need to mature a lot faster w mm -hmm. when you're in the military, but there's a different, um, it's kind of like the school of hard knocks in regards okay. to leadership responsibility. Uh, so those that are coming out of the military and they're going to four-year schools are actually okay. doing very well. Okay. Um, because they're driven, they're focused, and maybe they're a little bit more mature at 22 years old right. than they would have been, been, been at 18. Oh. Um, so it's a, it's a good opportunity. Yeah, the military seems to be forcing, not really forcing you, but an opportunity to grow up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and there's nobody that's more responsible for you than yourself while you're in okay. the military. Um, you know, you're kind of put on your own, and you're away from mom and dad, and you're away from family, and most <laughs> no of the calling. time, people are far away from home. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, I had two Marines from Alaska. Wow. And a plane That's ticket from, from North Carolina to Alaska was $3,000, so they didn't go home for four years. Wow. Um, even, you know, either pre-deployment or post-deployment, okay. they just didn't want to spend the money. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, the, the military doesn't pay a whole lot either, so, mm -hmm. so they didn't really have the opportunity to go home. So it forces them to become very independent, okay. uh, self-sustaining, which is a good thing. Right. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one of the things that the military does offer. Okay, cool. And then they had the, the final thing in regards to basic education benefits. It's called okay. a VOLP um, Rehabilitation Program. It's for people okay. that are really looking to get education maybe beyond your basic brick and mortar school. Okay. Uh, so let's say someone wanted to go into the trades, uh, wanted oh, to become okay. a plumber, an electrician, or something like that, uh, where they had to go to school for that. Okay. The Montgomery GI Bill or the post 9-11 GI Bill doesn't really cover that. Um, oh, so they okay. have this separ separate entity. It's a VOLP uh, Rehabilitation Program. Okay. And that's for people that are really looking to go into a trade um, or... Because not everybody wants to go to college. That's no, no. Okay. Which is completely fine. Yeah. Um, and and plumbers are probably making a exactly. significant amount of money more so than people that are, that are coming out but of business school. But it's still, school. you know, a school, you yeah, know, absolutely. further education. Right. Um, and then there's other education opportunities as well with the rehabilitation program. Okay. Let's say you wanted to go to a graduate course that wasn't considered full-time. Okay. As long as you can justify to them, hey, I need the money for this type of education piece, okay. that's really where that particular program comes in. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so there's a whole right. slew of education benefits, and that's just one portion of, okay. of VA benefits. Uh, another portion is, you know, a VA home loan. Um, okay. which is offered to anybody, again, that qualifies for VA benefits. Okay. Uh, and the great thing about the VA home loan is, number one, it's backed by the VA. Okay. And the good thing about that is a lot of people that are coming out of the military, they want to be homeowners, but maybe they don't have the 20% down, mm -hmm. um, and they don't necessarily want to be hit with the PMI. The VA will allow you to put 0% down, okay. up to a certain percentage of what the, the cost of the home is, okay. uh, and you don't pay PMI. Okay. Now, do you get this, like, through a regular bank, or is it directly Most through Most of it the is VA? through a regular bank. Okay. So you would talk with that bank um, and the broker or the loan officer, whoever you're talking to, you would let them know, hey, I'm a veteran, 
here's my DD-214, which are your separation papers. Okay. And then they would have you fill out a, 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 a file that's basically called the VA Home Loan Eligibility Certificate. Um, I have them in my Say office. Say that five times fast. I have them mm -hmm. in my office. It's, okay. it's really not something, if you have a DD-214, it's very easy to fill out. You give that to the bank. Um, and you can fill it out online too. Okay. And the VA Does it will get send you like it. a lower percentage? It can, for, okay. um, absolutely. So when I bought my, ho my uh, home, I bought it through the VA. Okay. Uh, luckily I had enough to put 20% down. And because I put 20% down and the VA backed my loan, I was okay. able to get half percentage point. Um, and furthermore- Which adds up over 25, 30 years. <laughs> the other thing too, the VA home loan helps with, it doesn't necessarily eliminate is closing costs as well. Oh, okay. Um, so your closing costs are probably gonna be significantly less okay. uh, with a VA home loan than they would be if you were to go to conventional 30 year mortgage. Okay. Speaking of home ownership, let's flip it a little bit. Okay. You know, a lot of times you'll see you know, homeless veterans right. or unemployed veterans and some, you know, are standing on the side of the road or if you go into Boston, you know, how big of a problem is that? Um, like either in Burlington itself or? I'm not going to say that we don't have them in Burlington because okay. we absolutely do. I knew, know a few veterans that okay. live out of vans. Um, and it's sad, really. But it's not as big of a pandemic as it would be in a major city, per okay. se. Um, but it's still a problem. And Massachusetts still has a homeless veteran problem. Okay. Uh, and Massachusetts and the VA is doing everything they can to try to alleviate that. Um, and one way that they are alleviating that is by offering up rooms in a place like the Chelsea Veterans Home. Okay. Uh, they also have one out in Holyoke. And then even our VA here in Bedford uh, oh, okay. is now building dorms. Uh, so they're basically one bedroom dorms okay. for people that qualify, you know, the, the homeless veteran that qualifies. And I believe, um, you know, last year they had maybe 21 of those rooms and I think they're quadrupling them now. Wow. Okay. If you drive down to the VA, they're actually building brand oh, new buildings. Okay that is going to act as the new homeless dormitories for. Okay. Yeah, so the, they're realizing that it is an issue, and that's okay. what Massachusetts is doing anyway. I don't necessarily, you know, well, the federal government okay. is trying to do as much as it possibly can. Um, and one of the things the federal government is doing is offering tax breaks to um, businesses that are hiring veterans. Oh, okay, which was leading to my next question. Yeah, so about the, the, the unemployability rate, um, it's high amongst veterans, and, and I've, I've seen some t statistics that say it's even like 15%. Wow, that is um, pretty high. Which is a lot higher than, you know, the what the national average. level right. is. Um, and whether or not that's due to um, physical or, or mental ailments with the veteran community or, um, you know, I really don't know really what it is. Okay. But, you know, we try to help individuals that say, because there's basically two classifications. There's okay. people that can't find work and then there's people that are unemployable. Oh, okay. Um, and the VA distinguishes between those two. If you are unemployable, the VA um, will give you a certain disability rating, whether or not that's, and if you have a service-connected disability, okay. if you're unemployable, they'll pay you up to, you know, 100%, which is almost $3,000 a month. Okay. Um, or if you don't have a service-connected disability, but you're considered unemployable, they have what's called non or um, non-service connected disability pensions oh, okay. um, that kind of help them financially that way. The other aspect of it is, is, is underemployed. So okay. people that are seeking employment but can't find it as veterans. Oh, okay. um, those are difficult, but those are a little bit easier than the unemployable. Okay. Um, just because there are so many good-hearted Americans that own businesses nowadays that are they don't understand the value of a veteran mm -hmm. and understand, you know, the values that veterans carry. So they're very much willing to, to hire veterans. Okay. Um, actually, I just had a, had a business in Woburn. Uh, it's an engraving business. 
uh, from a gentleman that was wondering if there were any veterans in, in town, because he's from Burlington, that would maybe like to learn the trade of engraving um, because he was looking to hire a veteran. Okay. Um, and th there are plenty of companies out there that, that are doing the exact same thing. And it's okay. not just all about the tax credits either. Yeah. I think it's the goodness out of their heart. Yeah. Well, I think that the Vietnam veterans got a bad rap. So I think right. society, you know, the general public is trying to make good on how the veterans were treated when they Absolutely. You know, the and there's actually a few groups, um, and really it was the Desert Storm Veterans Group that kind okay. of accepted the Vietnam veterans as one of their own. And, and actually after Desert Storm, there was a massive parade through New York City. Mm. And the leaders of the De Desert Storm Veterans Parade in New York City okay. contacted a lot of Vietnam veterans and asked them to oh, march okay. through New York City with them, kind of welcoming them um, and giving them something that was well-deserved but they did not receive back in you know, the late oh, 60s okay. and early 70s. So I, I, I give a lot of credit to the Desert Storm veterans because... I think they play a large role in how veterans are perceived today mm -hmm. as opposed to how veterans were received okay. back in 1970 to 1975. Okay. Now, changing the subject once again, um, with in line with different benefits, I read on the website about auto insurance, you know, auto insurance, auto yes. registration exemptions. Is that, you know, like you see the the POW and the disabled veterans. Right. Is it just dis disabled, or yes. is it like any veteran? Um, so you can get a veteran's plate. Okay. Yeah, I've seen them with like the different yes different and branches. You qualify for a veteran's plate by being a veteran, I okay. guess. Um, at least in Massachusetts. So you got to have a DD two fourteen. Okay. Um, and then again, you got to be within those twenty four months of active duty. Okay. Uh, and it's like vanity plates. Okay. So you're paying $40 uh, every two years, I believe, Okay. for that veteran plate. Um, so there's no, like, tax incentive there. Okay. For individuals that are severely disabled, um, okay. at least with the uh, registry of motor vehicles. This is like a physical disability? Yes, okay. a physical disability. So a loss of a limb, uh, loss of eyesight, certain things that classify you as a permanent disabled veteran. Um, okay. You know, you get excise tax um, breaks and then okay. you're not paying for registration. And there's actually programs out there as well that for individuals like that that need some type of accessibility van, uh, they actually give you know a one-time fee. I think it's up to thirty thousand oh, wow. dollars okay. uh, to allow someone to go out and and get one of those custom-made oh, okay. vans. The other um, tax exemptions, uh, at least with the state of Massachusetts, is uh, Mass General Law. Um, Oh, I forget it, but it's Clause 22. Okay. And if you are a 10%, 10% to 99% disabled veteran in Massachusetts, okay. you are exempt from $400 of your property tax each year. Okay. If you are 100% disabled, you get your property tax waived completely. Wow. In the great now, town of Burlington. Uh, just back it up a little bit. Does this disability have to be... Military related? Yes, it has to be a service okay. connected disability. So if you were 99%, you couldn't like go do something stupid. No. And, okay. No. To get that last right. 1%. Okay. But the town of Burlington actually doubles that tax exemption. Cool. Um, so the state mandates that Thank at you, the Burlington. very lowest level, um, it is $400. But the town of Burlington actually, if you're, like I said, 10% to um, 99%, that you are exempt $800. As long as you've lived in Burlington okay. um, for six months prior going in, or now you live in Burlington. Now. Okay. Yes. Now, I'm just kind of like glancing at my notes and everything. With the elections coming up, every time I go to the polls, there's always like a little veterans table. Yes. And they give the little the poppies. poppies or the forget-me-nots. Correct. 
Is your office involved in coordinating that table? Yes, we are. So my office is works in conjunction with the Burlington Allied Veterans Council. And okay. the Allied Veterans Council is made up of uh, the four service organizations, the American Legion, the VFW, the DAV, and the Marine Corps League. Okay. Um, my office works in conjunction with them. So they're actually the ones that are standing they at that table. Okay. Um, you know, they, they change every couple of hours. But those poppies and forget-me-nots go towards the um, Allied Veterans Council budget. And that okay. budget is used for things around town that necessarily deals with veterans things. So, so like the wreaths at Memorial Day or something? Um, or? Those are actually the wreaths at Memorial Day, um, the flags at Memorial Day, uh, and all the, the grave markers actually come through my office. Okay. That's part of the Chapter 115 um, program. Is And the great thing about the Chapter 115 is the state actually reimburses the town 75% of anything that comes okay. into a Burlington veteran. So the town okay. is on the docket for 25%. The state pays the 75%. Cool. Uh, that goes with all the flags and things like that. But the, the poppies goes towards um, certain things, like they, they just put a new flagpole up at the Veterans Park. Okay, yep. Um, because the other one was rusted and they couldn't get the flag down. That could be a problem. Um, so they just put a new flagpole in there. Th that money collected there goes towards okay. that. Okay. Uh, goes towards the upkeep. Um, and and all, some of that money went towards the new veterans portion of the common where the five okay. service flags were put yeah. in, the American flag That's was put in okay. with a nice wall and the... So part of the proceeds went to there. Okay. And then part of the proceeds goes to different organizations that the v Allied Veterans Council feels they exude all of the, um, whether or not it's the moral characteristics that you know the veterans stand for. So some of the money okay. goes towards sponsoring Eagle Scouts or Boy Scouts. Oh, okay. uh, it goes towards sponsoring individuals that are trying to get into either the junior marines or the civil air patrol or okay. things like that. So the money goes back into the community okay. um, in, a, in a few different ways. Now, the was it junior marines you said? And the civil air patrol? Yes. Because I actually, you know, remember back from my high school years. Those still active around yes, here? Yes, so Hanscom Air Force Base still has the civil air patrol. Okay. And Burlington has a junior marine um, program that's run out of the high school, I want to say, once a month on Thursdays. Okay. Um, by a man named Patrick Gilman is the, the okay. is it like of the Junior Marines. But it's a national-wide organization. Okay, and it's like any other extracurricular activity that somebody might want yeah, to participate kinda, in? Yeah, it's very similar to like JROTC. Okay. Um, you know, they learn a lot about military history, but most of it is dealing with leadership, uh, oh, trying okay. to instill leadership qualities. Uh, they do some drilling, um, okay. you know, marching, things like that. But most of it is, is leadership organization okay. or leadership-based um, okay. team-building stuff that, that they go through. Okay. And what's the significance of, you know, backing up to the poppies or the, for well, forget-me-nots seems pretty self-explanatory, but what about the poppies? So the poppies have been something that's been around for a long time, and I couldn't put my finger on when they started okay. but it has been a tradition now and there's organizations that make them and most of them are veterans organizations oh okay and so the allied veterans council buys the poppies from oh, these organizations okay. and and a lot of that money goes towards um wounded veterans uh it goes towards the individuals that are making the poppies uh, okay. Because some of them are underemployed veterans or or surviving spouses of veterans that don't okay. necessarily have another income, so okay. I mean it's kind of a, a revolving circle in regards to where the money's coming from and then where the money goes. Okay. Now, let's talk about community outreach because we talked a little earlier about how your appearance here is trying to spread the word that your office is available. Right. 
What other opportunities do you have? I mean, I can't imagine you guys setting up like a bake sale for fundraisers or anything. No, um, and, and the principal clerk and I, principal clerk being uh, Jennifer Goldsmith, she's a Navy okay. veteran as well. Um, in our first year of, of the job, we're trying to just get our feet from, okay. you know, under us. Then once we get more involved, we really want to start doing a lot more outreach. But what okay. I'm doing right now is I go down to the Council on Aging, and once a month okay. I meet with senior veterans. We kind of just have a, okay. a, a chat, um, you know, donuts and coffee. So if you're a veteran, a uh, senior veteran, you go to the Council on Aging. I don't exactly know when the next meeting is, but it is in the newsletter. on the calendar. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I try to do at least one posting. Free donuts, you know. Oh, absolutely. I try to do one posting on the uh, Council on Aging's new newsletter. Okay. I've been trying to, and then the newspaper has been great as well. I, I was on uh, BCAT about a couple months ago okay. with the four gentlemen. Okay. Um, and their their organization, which was fun. Um, just trying to get out there as much as possible. Okay. Because I really didn't know that Burlington had a veteran service officer okay. when I was first in the military. Okay. I knew that Veterans Day and Memorial Day were, were a big thing, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that that was necessarily tied to um, the Veterans Office. Now, you just made me think of another question that if you were interested in becoming involved in the military, yes. Would your office be able to help, like, a high school student saying, gee, do I want to? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and I think the high school is actually doing a fantastic job because when I was there, they didn't have the programs that they have now. Okay. But two months ago, the high school just put on, I want to say it was second annual uh, career conference. Okay. And so they contacted me and said, hey, would you be willing to talk to the hmm. students that are considering okay. going into the military? And I said, absolutely. So I went there, and I really wasn't – as I'm looking at the Burlington Veterans Census, and over the past couple of years, there's been maybe one or two from each graduating class. Mm -hmm. There were over 20 students that came in and, wow. and were interested. And I was very surprised to find out that there were at least five or six that had already signed up and w upon graduation wow. okay. uh, were, were going into the military. So once I found that out, one of the guidance counselors approached me and said, one of the things that we're trying to do with our seniors is the fourth quarter, send them out on interns, oh, internships. Okay. So I have a student coming to talk to me tomorrow, and we're going to try to set up an internship in cool. my office okay. uh, for him. And then hopefully we can continue this on with students that are interested in the military. Um, and so for the fourth quarter, he would be interning in the office. Okay. And the good thing about it is he would learn a lot about what, is important once you get out of the military, but the okay. other aspect of it is, is I spent eight years in the military, so I know exactly what he's about to go through <laughs> and hopefully can instill some knowledge in regards okay. to, uh, to giving it, him a leg up once now he Now when once you're at Lejeune, that. don't get, you know, yes. don't eat the vegetables. You know, <laughs> don't right. use latrine number three. Um. <laughs> right, so yeah, he's coming to see me tomorrow okay. and, and hopefully we can set something up here for the, um, April and May. Now, does your office have the opportunity for other volunteers we to do. do stuff? Um, and I have people that come in often and, and ask, you know, what can we do? And so one of the things, as I started to get more and more volunteers that okay. wanted to do things, um, and one of the things that I said earlier is, is our veteran community is getting older. Okay. And with that, it, it means that they can't do everything that they once were able to do, whether or not that's lawn care, shoveling snow, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I just put it out in the Council on Aging newsletter that we have volunteers that would like to help veterans or surviving spouses, mm -hmm. and whether or not that's raking leaves, mowing lawn, shoveling driveways. Uh, so we had a few people that responded. Excellent. Um, and I think that it will grow you know, in the, in the coming months. So we reached out. We also reached out to the Boy Scouts and said, hey, would you be willing to help out? Because they're always looking for projects, too. Okay. And one of their uh, community projects is helping out veterans. 
Hmm, so okay. reached out to the Boy Scouts. So we had some interest in and in with Boy Scouts and, and helping out some of the the older veterans cool. and, okay. and some yard work and things like that. So yeah, you there's could probably th approach the Girl Scouts too because we are equal opportunity. Oh, absolutely, here. absolutely. Oh wow! No, <laughs> sorry. Now, okay, were you were you all set? Yes, what, what, yes, what yes. kind of, you know, volunteer? Yes, so, so if they, somebody wanted to volunteer? If they wanted to volunteer, they'd come okay. up to the office. Um, we're always looking for handy men. Okay. Or handy women. Um, handy people. Yes. Because uh, we do have some older veterans that they don't want to be taken advantage of in regards to someone coming in and then giving them an outrageous yeah. quote to replace a window or something like yeah. that. So someone, you know handy person that's that's veteran friendly that okay. understands the situation that they're in uh we're always looking for them as well okay yeah i can't help you out there <laughs> i could probably change the light bulb and that's probably all you want me to do so we um we're almost out of time but the burlington allied veterans council is made up i need to refer to my notes because i do not have eight years of military history um American Legion, Disabled American Veterans, Burlington Marine Corps League, and Veterans of Foreign Wars. Correct. Now, how would someone as a veteran get involved in one of these groups, and could they get involved in more than one Absolutely. of the groups? Absolutely. I mean, if, as long as you qualify, you could qualify for all four. So, but, like, but what does the American Legion generally cover? The American Legion is you know, probably the, the one service that I believe anybody that at least is classified as a veteran, veteran. can get okay. into. Now that's completely up to them. Their their okay. um, their membership is, is dealt with at their level. Okay. But if you are a veteran and you want to become a, a member of the American Legion, just go down to the American Legion. Okay. They'll have you fill out some paperwork, and, and, you know, it's not that difficult. Okay. With the Marine Corps League, okay. it's different. you got to be a Marine. Well, you got to be a Marine. <laughs> oh, well, obviously. So the American Legion is open to all five branches. Okay. Uh, the Marine Corps League. you, now, you be can be an honorary member. Um, oh. Mm, so boy. principal clerk, uh, Jennifer Goldsmith, is an honorary member of, of the Marine Corps because League. Because she's a principal clerk. Yes, she, and she, she helps them out significantly, um, okay, but she can't vote in anything okay. uh, in regards to the Marine Corps League. The Disabled American Veterans, you have, um, to, be disabled. You have to be have some type of disability, okay. so 10% or more, okay. and then you would qualify. It doesn't matter which branch of service that you are and in. And the disability has to be service a result. Service connected. Okay, yes. thank you. And the and Veterans then of Foreign Wars. The Veterans of Foreign Wars is probably the most strict in regards to eligibility. Okay. You have to be a veteran of a foreign now, war. Now, is this combat? Um, Mostly? Or? It doesn't have to be combat, no. Oh, okay. Um, so, in today's classifications, I believe that, let's say you were in the Navy and you were awarded the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal because your okay. ship was in support of either Operation Enduring Freedom or Operation okay. Iraqi Freedom, you're encompassed under foreign wars. Okay. Um, if you served from 1984 to 1988 and you weren't a part of any type of operation or foreign right. war, then you don't qualify for the okay. for the veteran. Of That's kind of what I was. Yes. Okay, all right. Now, are there any upcoming community events that your office is involved in? So we do Memorial Day every year, and okay. that's the biggest one that's up and coming. Um, and we don't have a whole lot on the calendar in regards to from now between between now and then um, with the exception of we do partner with the American Legion okay. or the DAV so I believe February 20th the American Legion is putting on a veterans chili cook-off oh heard about that yes um, so I will be there because okay. um, I love Are you chili. one of the judges no no I'm not one of the judges um, but there are other other opportunities. Um, so the the VFW and the DAV they put on, um, they serve, especially the DAV they serve um, food to homeless in in oh, the okay. Lowell shelters, the Haverhill shelters. Okay. Um, and the, obviously the past couple of months around holiday season, we've had a few events. 
we had an event at the uh, Greek Orthodox Church hmm. in Woburn. They okay. wanted to put on an event for veterans, especially around the holidays, okay. uh, for the veterans that are living, the homeless veterans that All are right. living in the dormitories ah, in the VA. Okay. So they had a bus come out. Uh, they cooked them a fantastic meal uh, wow. and even sent them with doggy bags home, a few gift cards, and then also some... Um, necessities, whether or not it's toothpaste, toothbrushes, mm -hmm. socks, t-shirts, things like that. Well, guess what? We're all done. We're out of time. Okay. So I definitely want to thank you for coming on. I've learned a lot. And I think my head hurts. But thank you very much. And I want to thank everyone at home for tuning in and watching this evening. And I hope you found tonight's conversation as informative and as, and as enjoyable as I have. So have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you around town. Good night.